Hello, students. Michael Sanchez here. Thank you so much for joining me today on Google Hangout. So this is actually my first scheduled event that I have going on. I have Amanda with us today. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Amanda was participating in our last uh, Google Hangout. So basically today I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit more about this platform and then also uh, I'm going to teach you guys a little bit more about counting and music and how to play better uh, when it comes to rhythm. So uh, some of you guys are probably watching this directly on YouTube right now uh, and you can actually um, get a Google Plus account, maybe not today but next time, and you'll actually be able to participate in the uh, live discussions. Afterwards I'm going to be doing a Q&A so basically you can ask questions uh, live and I can answer them, help you guys out um, how to do certain things better, things that you're wondering about. So first I would like to talk to you guys uh, a little bit more about this platform, Google Hangout, and how you can get started. So Amanda, you're actually um, in IT and uh, you know a lot about computers and technology uh, for the most part, uh, but we agree that we both had a little bit of trouble getting set up. So let's talk to the to people out there as far as um, some tips and some advice on and getting started. So uh, what's some of your advice for people out there that are uh, interested in checking out this new platform? Well, my recommendation would definitely be first start with the operating system that you're using. So if you're a Windows user, I would go to Google and then go to YouTube and actually pull up the videos for how to install the Google Plus and use the Google Chats. Um, based off of the operating system that you have because there's a lot of great videos and tutorials that can make it a lot easier. Being a person who primarily uses Windows, I also like to use my iPad, which I'm on now, and I'm not as savvy with, you know, Mac systems. So what I did was I went and I found the tutorials and saw how to, you know, which apps I needed and how everything links together whenever you're logged in. And it just makes it a lot easier when you can get that one-on-one -on -one tutorial. Otherwise, it can get a little bit overwhelming when you're first trying to set up. So definitely go to YouTube and find a video that's based on what you need because people from Google Plus actually have set up these videos. And some of them are anywhere from 5 minutes to 40 minutes depending on you know, who did the video and what amount of detail you're looking for. So it's pretty easy once you get rolling. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really cool platform. Basically, it's kind of like the new Facebook. Um, it's very similar setup. So just like you have like a news feed on your wall for Facebook, uh, Google um, has also put together this platform, uh, Google Hangout. And actually, I was recommended to use this platform from somebody that knows a lot about um, you know online marketing and, and different things. And uh, they recommended this highly to me because you're able to um, have live discussions up with up to 10 people. So right now Amanda's one of the possible 10 that I can have uh, to talk to. And then uh, the audience can watch, uh, watch me with my students and see um, different questions that they ask and we can interact with each other. And, and my goal is hopefully that, um, you know, by doing this, you know, consistently every week, that students are going to be excited to participate and you know anything that people are wondering about that uh, you know they're um, not, not able to do certain things on the violin they're getting stuck they're able to join me in these live podcasts and I can answer their questions for them so yeah what do you think Amanda do you think this is a good potential platform for uh, for teaching lessons I do and I think it's a really great platform for a couple of reasons you know Skype even with an upgraded Skype account Skype tends to have a lot of connectivity issues, no matter if you're directly connected into your router or if you're on a Wi-Fi signal. So I think this has a lot better clarity, um, you know, better picture resolution, just better connection overall, and it doesn't leave for a lot of breaking up. You know, and I'm, I'm on here through a Wi-Fi connection right now, and I'm not having any problems hearing or seeing Michael. Um, you know, also from another standpoint, I think it's good because sometimes, you know, as students of the violin, like me being an adult beginner, it's, it's easy to get intimidated when you're working with an instructor who's playing, playing for 20 plus years and you're an adult that really doesn't know a whole lot. And sometimes we get nervous or we get stuck at, you know, a, a certain sticking point. You know, whether it be something with, you know, like what I'm here on this call for is with rhythm because for some of us it can just be hard, you know, getting, getting all the coordination together in it. So this is great because also in being able to not just interact with Michael, but other students or other people who are learning, whether you're beginning, intermediate, advanced, whatever your situation is, 
you know, we're all here and we can all ask the same question. So it might be me asking a question and there's somebody else on the call who, you know, really didn't feel comfortable asking the same question because, you know, just, just nerves when you're picking up something new and you're a beginner at it, especially as an adult. We're not like little kids where, you know, we don't, we don't care. We're adults and sometimes we have esteem issues with it or sometimes we're just intimidated by it. You know, I'll be the first to admit, you know, my, you know, I, I sometimes get nervous when I started taking lessons with Michael. I'd be, you know, through Skype and just nervous and shaking and, you know, you can clearly see that. But, you know, it gets easier as you go and I think this is a great way when there's other students on the call and, you know, you're not the only one out there who's struggling with something that the call is covering. Yeah, so you would say now that you've taken a few lessons with me, Amanda, you're not quite so intimidated by me? <laughs> no, I can actually relax, and I, I still hold the bow in my hand properly without it flipping out from sweating so much. So we've made some big progress there. <laughs> yeah, so to give you guys a background, if you guys didn't see the last video, Amanda's been taking lessons now for about, uh, I would say, three months now. And uh, she used to be in the military, and she found me online. Tell, tell us, uh, everybody out there, exactly how you found me, Amanda. Was it through Facebook, or was it through YouTube, or I can't remember? Well, you know, it was a combination of things. So I started taking violin lessons about March, April of this year at a local music conservatory. And it's, you know, it's a wonderful hands-on setting, but I was looking for something also to online. I was just looking at some YouTube videos, and I stumbled onto a website with a woman who actually has her own website and she does you know like videos that she has available online and so I was going to add this particular person's page on Facebook and in doing it Violin Tutor Pro popped up right underneath this so I just said oh why not I'll just add both because they both look like similar pages and I found you know the one site that I subscribe to is is you know not as active on their Facebook page but you know Michael's Violin Tutor Pro is always posting stuff so I remember the first time that I saw Michael's page, it was actually the first news feed that came up was his engagement photo with his now wife, Christy, and they were announcing their engagement, and then a post after that was, hey, if any of you have any questions about the violin or are looking to take lessons, you know, or have any, any issues that you're trying to break through, contact me, you know, and he had his Skype contact information, and I thought, oh, well, and I went and checked out his website. You know, in addition to looking at his Facebook page, watch some of his videos, and I thought, this guy's really good at what he's doing. Maybe I can add him on and, you know, take lessons from him through Skype. And I did, and I, I will say it's the best decision of my life because, you know, with technology making things a lot easier, I can be in the comfort of my home and, you know, I can be taking lessons in between cooking dinner. So it's great, and also, you know, Michael's approach is, you know, he asks you what you're looking for, as far as teaching methods and what you're comfortable with and you know my personality is a very determined bullheaded personality and you know where I take lessons I, I train under an old school pedagogue and I'm very grateful for that but at the same time I sometimes feel like we're moving too slow so I told my class that I'm looking for something that's challenging but that walks that fine line between challenging me and not overwhelming me and Michael's really really good at that balance where Everything that he's pushed me through in the Essential Element series that I work in with him has helped complement the ABCs of the violin series that I also work on at my in-person lessons. And because of Michael, I've made tremendous progress on the violin in a short period of time. And, you know, Michael told me the other one of our lessons that, you know, on the next few months once we get out of, you know, the second book that, you know, we're going to be starting vibrato, which is a big thing for anybody who picks up the violin. It's one of the first things we start asking about is, when will I be ready for this? So it's really exciting. It's a rewarding experience. Well, I'm so glad that you're satisfied with the lessons, uh, Amanda. It, it makes me feel really great that you're, uh, you know, you didn't know anything about the violin when you first started, and now you seem to be enjoying it. And I really appreciate you joining me on this call. So uh, would you say, um, since we've started lessons, we've talked a lot about rhythm. So I kind of wanted that to be our, our center of our um, discussion today with uh, talking about, you know, different tips and uh, different things regarding how to count better in, in music. So, um, yeah, basically, I mean, so many students, when they first start, I mean, everybody's in a different boat. Some people, you know, have played um, piano beforehand, so they have a, a good, solid background as far as counting. Some people have never played an instrument before, so they're kind of in that boat to where they're struggling a little bit with counting, and they don't really understand exactly how to do it properly. So... I'm going to go over some of that today. Uh, Amanda, what's your background with this? Um, you Have you played another musical instrument? I can't remember. 
Well, when I was a kid, I played the flute very briefly, but I was one of those children who was given an instrument to play and would never practice and would show up for the lessons and not listen to the instructors. So basically, my musical background has been very non-existent because I, I, you know, I spent a lot of my school days as a child going through a private school, and, and I went through a private school that didn't have a music program. So I really had a disadvantage in that. And you know, when I was in high school. There were music programs available, but I hadn't started as a kid, so it was one of those, you know, you're a teenager, and you didn't start when you're a kid, so you're not about to, you know, try and get into orchestra or even take lessons when you're in 9th or 10th grade because everybody's so far beyond you that you just, you don't even consider it. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, definitely giving you some lessons on rhythm, but I kind of want to start at the very beginning and kind of just go over some of the basics with people. Um, so some of this might be easy for some of you, um, but I'm going to get a little bit more in depth with it as we go. Um, so basically, you know, what's really important is to know, you know, the values of different rhythms. So when you first start, and I actually teach a lot out of this book, Essential Elements, um, book one, and I also have book two here uh, that we're going to talk about a few things in there. So yeah, Amanda, currently you're in halfway through book two, right? Yep, we're halfway through book two. Right. So basically, uh, when you first start learning the violin or any musical instrument, you normally learn the basic quarter note. And every quarter note is basically one beat. The second rhythm that we learn typically in music is the eighth note. And typically those are together in twos, like this. Now two of these actually equal one of these, so I'm also going to write down equals one for that, but sometimes you see eighth notes by themselves. Basically they look like this. So this, these are two eighth notes equal one beat together, same length as this, and then we have the single eighth note, which is half a beat. So these are kind of the first rhythms we learn, and then the last one that's in book one is the half note, which is two beats. Familiar with this, Amanda? <laughs> yeah, very familiar with it. <laughs> so basically, it's really important to know how long each rhythm is. Now, as far as what that means is that in music, there's a meter, there's a beat, and that uh, basically applies to every single song that we learn. So uh, sometimes the beat is going to be fast, sometimes it's going to be slow. Typically, when you're first learning a song, you want to start off slow so that you can do the entire song in rhythm, in meter, okay? So, for example, this can be a beat. One, two, three, four, okay? So that was four beats. But that same thing could have been one, two, three, four. That was a fast beat. I don't recommend doing too fast to start because you want to really get the hang of uh, playing and uh, listening, doing rhythm slowly. Follow me so far, Amanda? I follow. All right. So basically, uh, each one of those counts, each one of those taps that I just said has to do with one here. So, for example, with four counts, four beats, there could be four quarter notes. There could be eight eighth notes. So this is single eighth notes. And then um, in two beats and four uh, beats, it would be um, two half notes. So there's different combinations that you're going to see. So in one measure, one measure typically is four beats. You could see the rhythm one quarter note, two eighth notes, and a half note. So this would be a total of four beats. One, two, three, four equals four. Another possibility would be two half notes equals four. Another possibility would be four quarter notes, also equals four. So what's really important about this is that no matter which one of these lines you guys were to see in music, they should all be exactly the same length, four counts. Okay? So let's say I'm going to count the beat. My beat is going to be one, two, ready, Go one, two, and three, four. This one would be one, two, three, four. Now, do you guys notice that my head 
is bobbing, that's basically the beat. So no matter what notes are being played, basically you should always have the same beat going. This kind of goes with the concept of um, tapping your head and rubbing your tummy. Can you do that, Amanda? <laughs> I'm a little bit uncoordinated. So, <laughs> so basically uh, some people struggle with that to be able to have a beat going, have a tap going, and also be thinking a certain way as far as the rhythm. So that's, that's ultimately what rhythm is all about, is keeping the meter, keeping the beat, but then doing different things on the violin or any musical instrument. So I'm going to do this again. I want you guys to notice that my head is bobbing the same exact way every time. That's the beat. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Now what gets people off is if their beat or their bob is going a different speed. So let's say I start here. I go one, two, and three, four. So they're changing the beat, the rhythm. And that's what it's all about. So uh, what I recommend to students is that they tap their foot. So they basically, what I'm doing with my head, they're using their foot to do that. So that they can kind of follow to see exactly the speed of how fast the piece should go. And another note, what's really easy for students to do is to change the speed when the music is either more difficult or, more, or easier. So would you say, Amanda, in some songs, like if you have, like, just say a quarter note run uh, where you play a bunch of easy notes, it's easy to rush? Yeah, it is, because you can get ahead of yourself, and then you don't keep a consistent beat, and then you find you're speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. And the opposite side of that would be, let's say you have a tri tricky uh, eighth note or sixteenth note passage. It's easy to kind of slow it down uh, because it's more difficult, so the beat can easily slow down. What, would you say that's pretty true? Oh, absolutely, because when you have the 16th notes, they're faster than the 8th notes, but when you have, like, 16th notes, 8th notes, quarter notes, and half notes, all in, you know, one passage or in a piece of music, it's easy to start rushing, and then you try and rush the 8th notes where they're halfway between an 8th note and the 16th note, and the tempo just falls off. Exactly. So what's key uh, is really keeping that beat the same always. Always the same. So one tool you guys can also use is what's called a metronome. And a metronome is basically a tool that keeps the beat for you, and it's always consistent. And they can, uh, you can speed it up, you can slow it down, depending on how fast you want to take the song. I have an iPhone, and my iPhone, I downloaded an app. It's called the Pro Metronome. Uh, it's a really nifty, free uh, app that uh, has a metronome right on your phone. So basically right now, if you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but um, 60 beats per minute is the same as a second. That's what I'm going to set it at right now. Amanda, can you hear that beat? I can hear. Okay. So basically what I can do is I can set this on my desk right now, and we can refer back to our sheet. So now the metronome is giving us the beat that basically we need to go throughout the whole piece. So it's going to go just like this. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that might be simple for some of you guys. Um, we'll definitely talk more in depth, uh, more difficult uh, passages, you know, in, in later future lessons. But that's kind of the concept. So basically, if I need to, if, let's say I'm doing that really well and I didn't make any mistakes. What I would recommend is speeding up the metronome. So now I'm at 120. So now this is going to go a lot faster. But I only recommend doing this if you're if you're able to play everything properly. So now this would go 1, 2, and 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 1, 1. Just like that. Does that make sense, Amanda? Yes, it does. Very good. I'm going to shut down my metronome here. Uh, do you have any any Quick questions before I kind of go on to the next uh, segment of this. Okay, so, you know, so one of the challenges that we've been working on and different passages of music is, okay, so, you know, it's easy to understand, you know, conceptually how the counting goes, and you can count it out, you can work with the metronome, but then trying to pull the whole package together, 
what are some ways that you help students like myself in working through those when you're actually picking up the violin and the bow and working that? Yeah, so kind of, like you said, putting things all together. Um, you know, it, it's really important to, uh, you know, make sure that your fingers are in the right spots, you know, when you're playing these passages. That's another thing. You don't want to speed up the piece if you're not able to play it properly. So different elements of playing proper would be playing in tune, um, having your technique proper so that you make a good sound. Um, you know, doing the slurs, doing different things, uh, articulation, depending on what level you're at. But, you know, basically the, doing rhythm should, or speeding up a piece should be the last thing you should worry about. You should always be just trying to get everything proper, everything to be right in the tempo, right in the meter, and then working on your technique. The more you play a song, the better it's going to get as far as um, the speed. So let's say you play a song a thousand times. Naturally, you're going to play it faster because you've played it so many times. But the people that try to speed it up like each time, let's say like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, that's the people that um, tend to not play songs properly and they don't sound as good. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So, so some, some other things, you know, and, and question is, okay, so you mentioned the foot tapping method. Or also, you have one that you'd like to work with me and you know, doing the violin bob. So what are some other ways, or for people who are struggling with those, because I know that's been one issue we've worked on, you know, the foot tapping is not always good for me, and the bob, I sometimes just start screeching on the strings. <laughs> um, what, what are some other methods, and you know, can, can you show us some methods of how you know, the slowest, smoothest, smoothest, fast with these different techniques when we're working on it in practice. Sure. Um, and, you know, actually that kind of leads me into the next segment of talking about rhythm because basically there's, there's two different parts to understanding how to count. One of them is understanding this, what we just talked about, and the other one is understanding how to get from a measure to the next measure. So a lot of that has to do with how you're thinking. So to answer your question, a lot of playing rhythm is how you think. It's not always how you're bobbing. Bobbing is important as well, or to tapping. But there's two different there's two different sides to this. So I'm going to write out a rhythm passage here. So my first couple notes are going to be eighth notes. Then I'm going to put a quarter note, two more eighth notes, and another quarter note. So here's um, a select rhythm here. Can you see this well, Amanda? Yes, I can. Good. Okay. So basically, typically in music, there's four beats per measure. There's four quarter notes per measure, okay? So this whole entire, from here to here, this is a measure, wherever the lines are. So every single measure in a, in a piece is, is going to be the same time signature unless uh, they signi signify otherwise. So basically, to get from here to here, that's where the bobs come in. One, two, three, four, the next measure is right here. Hmm, two, three, the measure is right here, okay? That's where the bobs are helping, but thinking is another thing, okay? So one way you can think of eighth notes is one and, or you can do what I prefer is to count in eighth notes to where each quarter note would be two and each eighth note would be one. I'll show you what I mean. So below two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Basically what I'm doing is I'm splitting this measure into, into eight parts. So before I was thinking in quarter notes, there's four per measure. But that can kind of get tricky when you're counting these eighth notes. You can start to maybe rush them or count them too slow or fast. So now basically I'm thinking differently. I'm thinking in eight per measure. So instead of one and two, three and four, it's one, 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 two, one, 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 two, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So now I don't suggest that you count out loud while you're playing the violin because that would be kind of tricky. But what you can do is you can think that way, and then you can also be tapping or bobbing. So this is what I would do if I had this passage. I would be going one, one, 
One, two, one, 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 two, the measure next measure starts here. Does that make sense? Yes. So yeah, there's two different sides to counting. There's this, the side that kind of gets you from place to place, and then there's the actual taking what's inside of it and dissecting it to where you understand exactly how it works. And we've, we've been doing a lot of that in book two with the essential elements. So um, any other questions, Amanda, you think I should cover with this? Does that make pretty clear sense? Do you think that to the beginner that's uh, maybe struggling with rhythm, do you think I covered a lot of things? Or what do you think else I should be talking about? Um, OK, so incorporating the metronome into the counting. So how you can actually start doing the count to work on you know, warm-up exercises before you actually start putting the vote of the strings. Oh, yeah. I mean, just. Uh, there's different ways, I mean, because if you start to actually play right away, uh, there's a lot of things to remember. I mean, you, you know from lessons how many fundamentals there are on the violin, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so it's tricky to do everything at once, you know, to keep your elbow up, to have the right bow grip. Uh, and these are things we'll talk about in future lessons. But basically, uh, what I re recommend is to take a piece and just clap it. You know, so instead, let's say this is your music, I don't suggest picking up your violin and just start playing. I suggest actually clapping it first to make sure you have a solid foundation of the rhythm. After that, I suggest that you pluck it. So basically plucking is taking your thumb, putting it on the corner of the fingerboard, and then taking your finger and just picking the string and try to do it in rhythm, bobbing and tapping at the same time if you can. That simplifies things because otherwise you can be basically using, you know, your arm, and you might be thinking about your bow grip. Now that kind of takes all that out of there, so you can just focus on the rhythm and counting. So I would suggest clapping first. I suggest uh, plucking second. And then once you feel comfortable, then I would go into using the bow. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it definitely helps because, you know, you've had me doing a lot of that where I'm clapping. And that helps because you start internalizing it. And when you start internalizing it, you know when you actually go to put the bow to the strings and play when you're on. So I can start off a passage and I can be on, but if I fall off the tempo, it's something where, because I've been working on internalizing it, I know when I've fallen off the tempo. Absolutely. So yeah, it's, it's really important to just simplify things, take it step by step. And you know, what I recommend to you guys out there is to not rush learning rhythm, you know, really take it slow, work on it. It takes practice just like anything else. Um, some of you guys, you know, do it better than others because you've had previous experience with other instruments, you know, depending on where you're at. But if you haven't, then I really recommend that you take things slow and work on things slow because uh, that's ultimately how you're going to get the best and sound the best on the violin. So I think what I'm going to do in the future for you guys is um, have a more in-depth rhythm session. This is more beginner um, rhythm. But uh, Amanda, we've talked about like 16th notes, dotted eighth notes, different things like that. And I've actually had some pretty in-depth conversations and lessons with students at the little higher level with rhythm. Uh, but please email me if you have any questions, rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. would love to work with you and answer any of your questions. Um, I do have the live chat feature that you guys can use anytime. Um, I'm, I like to be on my computer as much as I can when I'm not teaching. Just send me a message and I'll be able to help you guys uh, you know, through your, your problems or issues you're having. Um, and I'm just always here to answer any of your questions. So, um, so yeah, Amanda, what else uh, do you think uh, we should cover? Do you have any other questions for me? Well, Michael, so how about you know, maybe, maybe something that you're doing, maybe it'd be cool for those of us you know, who are, you know, something that I think would be cool for you to offer to us, you know, students of learning is, you know, having, you know, like face, Facebook, like chat groups for specialized topics, like people who always want to ask questions about vibrato or about certain rhythm stuff, you know, maybe, maybe if there's enough of us that are interested, we could have groups where we could all go in and motivate each other. Because I think that's the best thing, you know, with helping me progress with the violin is interacting with other students of the violin, be them, you know, on a more beginner level than I am or somebody who's been playing for 5, 10, 20 years. You know, I think it helps just being able to have that community interaction because 
it's something that you know would be great, which I really haven't you know seen much of an opportunity to be able to chat with other people on your Facebook page, but. I think it'd be great if we could have like community group chats on Facebook if there's other people like me who would just really like to interact with the other students out there who are coming to you and you know so we can help keep each other motivated because I know you know with me I'm, I'm very motivated and driven with my practice and I have ways that work for me that I practice but you know maybe if I'm struggling with something maybe it's it's about you know not just coming to you and saying hey Michael I, I need some words of motivation or encouragement but maybe, you know, talking to another student who's gone through similar struggles or who's on the same thing and saying, hey, let me get your perspective about this. You know, what are, you, know, what are you doing to combat this area that you're struggling with? Or in your practice session, how are you breaking down your time management of your practice when you're working on something? So I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's great. I would really like to see, you know, more of the community interaction from you know, your followers, because I'd like to interact with some of them too, because I've seen some, like, really awesome students that you've had in some of your other videos. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think that's some great advice, and, uh, you know, I'm open to whatever, you know, suggestions you guys have out there. Um, you know, I, I do this all day, all the time, teaching uh, full-time, and, you know, this is my specialty, but sometimes I don't always know the best idea um, with you know the internet, I certainly try my best to come up with ideas and things. I'm really excited about this platform, but like yeah, that's a great idea as far as the forums and the Facebook thing. Um, so yeah, if you guys agree with that and think that's a good good idea, then please email me and just give me some feedback on what you think I should be doing because uh, certainly I just want to do whatever is going to help my students out there the most learn and uh, progress in the violin uh, and get them excited about it. So. Um, you know, the one thing I want to discuss with you guys, too, it's, it's so, so difficult sometimes to know what to do as far as music because of the whole copyright issues, you know. <laughs> um, that's always a thing that I, I always have dwindling in my mind when I'm trying to pick music out and stuff like that. So we'll have to, like, talk about that, you know, in some se future sessions as well, um, some ideas that you guys have to implement, you know, music. And so, yeah, really, I'm look really looking forward to building this and, you um, you know, getting a lot of following, and, uh, you know, please just email me if you have any questions or advice for me. I really appreciate it, so. Yeah. It'd be great, or even, or even Michael, you know, something for some of us, kind of maybe have, like, a members-only area on your website that, you know, you would service, and, you know, we would pay maybe, like, a, you know, a fee to join where we could go in and, you know, we could, you know, where there'd be interactive forums that we could all talk on and also have the opportunity to upload our own videos of us practicing or doing something and get your feedback or other members' perspective, you know, to really have that one-on-one -on -one interaction where it's kind of, you know, a safe zone where only people who are really interested go and interact, you know, with us paying, you know, a, you know, a monthly membership fee or something. Yeah, that sounds cool, for sure. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, the one thing I'm kind of not sure about what I want to do is how many of these sessions I want to have per week. So, I mean, if you guys can give me some advice on that. Like this week I have scheduled like three or four sessions uh, covering different topics, you know, because everybody's at different levels. Everybody's, um, you know, interested in different types of music. So it's like I don't want to have one thing a week that, you know, you know, only appeals to so many people. So that was my thought is to have like, you know, tomorrow, for example, I'm going to be covering technique. Um, and then like I think Thursday I'm going to be covering like, you know, uh, intermediate advanced concepts, you know, to some more, you know, advanced students. Uh, Friday I'm going to be doing fiddling. Uh, and Saturday I was thinking of doing like a um, spotlight Saturday where I basically performed a certain songs for people and I can take requests and uh, I don't know I thought that might have been a good idea what do you think about that Amanda? I think that would be pretty neat I think you know the more interaction that you get with us or even just have open sessions where it's sort of a hey show up and let me get your input where we can all talk just because you know I think some of us we all have different schedules or family lives and you know we don't always get the post so there's you know a timing issue but if it's just kind of, hey, sign on, and you might have a question about rhythm, somebody else might have a question about bowing technique, you know, all, different different things where you could just kind of all get it out on the table and figure out, you know, what works for everybody. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea, the more the one-on-one -on -one interaction. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, just that, you know, even these sessions, you know, having, like, 
you know, because I'm allowed to have up to 10 people per session. Um, you know, I think just having 10 people in, in this conference talk with each other and get to know each other. Um, you know, I'm sure, the, you know, if somebody um, talks with each other, I mean, they'll start to build connections and, and get more motivated. And so, yeah, I really hope that you guys uh, send me emails about wanting to join the sessions. Uh, so far, obviously, today it's just me and Amanda, but, like, maybe next time we'll have Amanda and somebody else or three people, four people. I think it would be really cool to, um, you know, have a, a large conference of students. And then my, my vision of this is just to have a lot of audience watching. And then at the end, you know, everybody can ask questions um, personally for any of the students that are watching, uh, as well as for me, you know, if they have any things that they're wondering about with technique or certain things. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about this whole platform, and I'm really looking forward to getting it going, getting your feedback. Um, again, please email me, rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. Uh, please join my Facebook page as well. It's facebook.com slash violintutorpro. I'll be posting a lot of the updates and stuff on there um, when when the sessions are. Uh, I, just, I did just send an email out to everybody with the uh, times for this week. So, yeah, tomorrow I'm actually going to be covering um, beginner technique, and that's at 9.45. So, yeah, maybe, uh, Amanda, if you want to join me on that. And then I'm also going to ask a couple other people. And uh, if anybody, anybody else that's interested, please let me know because uh, it would be fun to have as many people as possible. Sounds great. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, this is our first kind of official session, official show. So I hope it went well for everybody. Um, next time I'm going to have to do the Q&As because, unfortunately, I did not click a button that I needed to before the session started. Um, but for sure, next time, uh, tomorrow I'll do that, so I'll be able to answer the Q&As. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and, Amanda, thank you so much for participating and joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me, Michael. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.